How did George W. Bush do running for re-election in 2004 compared to when he first won in 2000? Today on Political Access, we're going to look at these two political shifts. I've done this for some other elections, Obama's first run and second run, Trump's first run and second run. So today we're just going to look at the vote share between the Democrat and the Republican in 2000 and 2004. And at the end, there will be a map showing all of the shifts. So if you want to just skip ahead to the map, there will be a chapter down below in the description. So I made my own spreadsheet, even though this data, I'm sure, is all over the place. But the first column here is the states. The second column is the Democratic vote in 2000, which was Al Gore, followed by the Republican vote in 2000, George W. Bush. Next is the Democratic vote in 2004, which was John Kerry. Then George W. Bush's vote in 2004, followed by the Democratic shifts between 2000 and 2004. Next to that is the Republican shifts. And the last column, these are the net change between the two parties, between the two elections. And I also have some shading. The light red and light blue, those are under five point shifts. And the dark red and the dark blue, those are 10 or more point shifts. So briefly, a little bit of background. In 2000, George W. Bush did win the Electoral College. He did not win the popular vote. When he ran for re-election in 2004, he was able to win the popular vote. And he expanded his margin a little bit in the Electoral College. He generally did a little bit better in most of the states, but there were some states that went the other way toward John Kerry. A few states did flip between these two elections, but in 2004, George W. Bush's popularity had really begun to sink from when it peaked after 9-11. And also in 2000, there was Ralph Nader, the third party candidate from the Green Party. He got over 2.5% of the popular vote. Some states, that does play more of a role than others. In 2004, there was much less influence from third-party votes, so in some cases, both parties actually gained support over 2000. So without going into all the specifics about these elections, let's get started in Alabama. In 2000, Al Gore the Democrat got 41.6% of the vote, George W. Bush got 56.5%. Jump ahead to 2004, John Kerry the Democrat, he went down to 36.8%, George W. Bush went up to 62.5%. That's a net loss of 4.8 for the Democrats, a net gain of 6 for the Republicans, and a total net change of 10.8% in favor of the Republicans. That's a pretty big shift. Usually you don't see double-digit shifts between two elections, as it's just not enough time. But in this case, Bush did significantly better in Alabama. And let's quickly go through the rest of these states. Alaska, that went 5.3 toward the Democrats. Arizona got 4.2% more Republican. Arkansas, 4.3% more Republican. California, that's a blue state, but it went 1.9% away from the Democrats and toward the Republicans. How about in Colorado? Well, 2004 was the last time a Republican won it, and between these two years, it did shift 37 toward the Democrats. Next in Connecticut, that went a big 72 toward the Republicans. Delaware went 55 toward the GOP. Florida went 5 points to the GOP. In Georgia, that also went toward the GOP by 4.2. Hawaii, that went almost double digits, 9.6 toward the Republicans. Surprisingly, Bush lost by under 10 points in 2004 in Hawaii. Idaho, small change, 1.5 toward the Democrats. Illinois went 1.7 toward the right. Indiana, 4.9 toward the Republicans. How about in Iowa? Well, Al Gore actually nearly won that in 2000. It flipped to George W. Bush in 2004. Both of the margins were small, but it resulted in a 1% shift toward the Republicans. Kansas, that went 4.6 toward the right. Kentucky, same direction by 4.8. Louisiana, that had a decent shift toward the Republicans by 6.8. How about in Maine? That went toward the Democrats by 3.9. Maryland went 3.4 toward the Republicans, same with Massachusetts by 4.2. Michigan went 1.8 toward the right. Minnesota went back in the other direction by 1.1. Mississippi, 2.7 toward the Republicans. In Missouri, George W. Bush did 3.9% better than he did in 2000. Montana, that went 4.5 toward the Democrats. Nebraska, 4.2 toward the Republicans. Nevada, very little change. Both parties gained support over 2000. 1.9 for the Democrats, 1% for the Republicans, and that results in a 0.9% shift toward the Democrats. The next state is New Hampshire. John Kerry was able to flip that in 2004, and that ended up being a 2.6% shift toward the left. The next state is New Jersey. That was actually almost a close election, with George W. Bush getting over 46% of the vote, and that was a big 9.1% shift away from the Democrats. How about in New Mexico? That went toward the Republicans by 0.7%. 
and that shift was enough to flip it for George W. Bush after Al Gore won it in 2000. Next to New York, that went 6.7 toward the Republicans. North Carolina, with very little change, 4 tenths of a percent toward the Democrats. North Dakota, 2 tenths of a percent toward the Democrats. Ohio, that went 1.4 toward the Democrats. Oklahoma shifted 9.3 toward the Republicans. Oregon went 3.7 toward the Democrats. Pennsylvania, 1.7 toward the Republicans. Rhode Island had a big shift toward the right by 8.4%. South Carolina, 1.2 toward the right. South Dakota, that went in the opposite direction by the same margin of 1.2%. Tennessee, that went double digits 10.4 toward the Republican George W. Bush. How about in Texas? George W. Bush was obviously from Texas, and he improved on his margin there by 1.6. Utah, that went 5% toward the Republicans. Vermont, that went the biggest shift toward the Democrats, all the way 10.2% toward the left. Virginia had almost no net change, only one-tenth of a percent toward the Republicans. Washington went 1.7 toward the Democrats. West Virginia went 6.6 toward the Republicans. Wisconsin had almost no change, 0.2 toward the Democrats. Wyoming, the last state, that also had very little change, only three-tenths of a percent toward the Democrats. So those are all the states and all of the shifts. And we can do one more thing with this data. We can apply it to a map to help visualize. And here it is. It's the same basic shading. The darkest red and blue are 10 or more point shifts. All the way down to the very lightest shading. Those are under one point shifts. We'll say those are the tilt margins. So we've got four tiers of shading for the shifts. There's not a lot of dark states. Again, because it's just between two elections. But there were still some decent shifts here. And I thought this was fun to brush up and go back and see what kind of shifts took place. Sometimes you forget which states flip between two elections. And also some of these states were much more politically different than they are today. But for the most part, a lot of the shifts were only by a few points and were mostly inconsequential. So feel free to draw any conclusions you'd like. I just like seeing all the data, taking a look at the shifts, seeing the different colors presented on a map. Every presidential election will, of course, have their nuances and different factors in different states. But these are the shifts between 2000 and 2004. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about the shifts in any of these states? Which states are you most surprised by? And do you remember these two elections? They were pretty close at the time. And how do you think these two elections compare to the last election and the upcoming presidential election? Let me know down below. And on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.